Hey everyone, Rob from Coding Concepts here, and in today's video, we'll be learning about the repository pattern. As always, if you find this content useful, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps us reach more people and to continue to bring you more Coding Concept videos. Thanks for watching and let's get into it. So what is the repository pattern? We can define the repository pattern as a collection of classes focused on encapsulating the logic necessary to interact with our data with the following benefits. Centralizing common data access functionality. Providing for better code maintainability. Decoupling our infrastructure layer from our domain model layer. And making our code more testable. Let's look at an example to see the types of problems the repository pattern helps us solve. Consider a scenario for an online store where on both the account settings page and the products page, there is a friendly heading greeting the signed in user by their first name. As we look at the current solution, let's break down some of the problems with this design. The first problem is that both the account settings controller and the products controller implement their own private get username methods to retrieve the user's first name. This is code duplication and violates a programming principle called don't repeat yourself or dry. Code duplication is bad because it makes our application more difficult to change and increases the time and effort necessary to maintain the code base. Think about what will happen if we need to make a change to how the user's name is retrieved. We now have to make duplicate changes in both of our get username methods. Also consider that we will likely have to spend more time analyzing the scope of the change as we have to determine all the areas in the application where we need to make code changes. This is prone to mistakes and introduces more time, money, and complexity needed to make changes to the code base. The second problem with this design is that we're requiring the controllers to understand how to access the data. In this scenario, since we're retrieving the data from a database, that means the controllers are responsible for managing things like database connections and connection strings. This creates a more tightly coupled architecture as we're binding our controllers to whatever infrastructure is being used to fetch our data. This makes our code more difficult to change and less flexible. The third problem is this code is difficult to test. It's not really practical to write automated tests for this design because we would have to manage all the functionality and dependencies happening in our infrastructure. This added complexity discourages and restricts our ability to write testable code, impacting our ability to adapt to changing requirements and can reduce our code quality. Let's look at how we can use the repository pattern to help us solve some of the problems with our first design. The first improvement we can see is that our data access code is now centralized and our code duplication is gone. Both of our controllers are now calling a common method from a shared repository to retrieve a user and display the first name. Centralizing our data access code helped us adhere to the don't repeat yourself or dry principle. This approach makes our code more maintainable as it simplifies our architecture making it more flexible and easier to change. The simpler and more maintainable we can make our code, the better positioned we are to spend more time delivering value to our users and reducing the development costs in the long run. Another benefit of this design is our application layers now decoupled from our infrastructure layer. We now have the flexibility of the two layers being able to change independent of each other. We have also moved the responsibility of how to interact with our data from our controllers and into our repositories. This enables us to use interfaces to define only the expected behavior of our repositories to our controllers and shield it from implementation details. This also provides us scalability and flexibility in considering design choices in our data access, such as a particular ORM, APIs, NoSQL, or potentially a new technology. The key is, the more loosely coupled your code is, the easier it is to change and maintain, and you'll have greater flexibility overall. The last benefit of this design is that it makes our code more testable. Because we're no longer bound to the lower level infrastructure being used to serve our data, we can do things such as provide in-memory mocks in place of database queries. This makes it much easier to write automated tests as we no longer have to be concerned with the underlying infrastructure such as a database needed to retrieve our data. Writing code that is testable is important to delivering high quality code. It gives you a higher confidence level that your code is correct and reduces the time and effort needed to deliver that code to production. 
Let's look at some of the best practices and concepts to consider when starting to write your own repository implementations. Implement CRUD operations. Have one repository per business object. Provide a contractor interface. And use generic implementations. When writing implementations for our repositories, they should be designed to handle CRUD operations. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. Let's look at what a repository would look like for our user class. As we look at the methods defined in our repository, it's pretty clear to see how they map to our CRUD operations. We can map these methods to common commands we'll be performing in our infrastructure code. Create can be mapped to doing SQL inserts or HTTP posts if we're using an API. Read can be mapped to select and get. Update to the SQL update command and put for HTTP. And delete uses the delete command for both SQL and HTTP. When writing our repositories, it's generally considered best practice to have one repository per business object. This is because it adheres to the single responsibility principle, which states that an object should have a single reason to change. To look at an example, if we had three objects, user, products, and orders, we would want to create a corresponding repository for each object to keep our separation of concerns intact. The next best practice we'll look at is to provide a contractor interface with our repositories. This helps us maintain a loosely coupled architecture and abstracts away the lower level infrastructure concerns such as managing database connections. We no longer have to directly inject the concrete classes into our controllers and services. We can pass in just an interface. This gives us the flexibility in our architecture to use different implementations of the same interface. One common scenario is to replace a repository implementation which uses a database with an implementation that uses in-memory data such as a list or an array. By doing this, we've removed our dependency from the database for testing purposes. This makes our code much more testable. Let's look at how we can use a generic interface to streamline and reduce some of the code we may need to write and maintain. If we look at a sample repository interface for our user class, we can use this pattern to write other interfaces for our other business objects. The only thing that changes is the object in the definition. But you might be starting to notice that this is a lot of repetitive and tedious code to keep writing for each of our objects. One strategy we can implement to help us is to make our repository interface generic. Using this generic interface now gives us a single interface we can use to define our CRUD operations for all of our business objects. Our generic interface will help us reduce the number of interfaces we need to write but it still requires us to write a repository implementation per business object. If we introduce a base entity class in which all of our business objects inherit from, we can write an entity repository to handle all of the CRUD operations for all of our business objects. This will significantly reduce the need to write boilerplate infrastructure code as for more simpler objects, the entity repository could be all that's needed. It will also help us remove a lot of redundant code in our system, helping us make our code base more maintainable and flexible to change. Let's summarize the benefits and best practices of using the repository pattern. The first is it creates more maintainable code. By centralizing our data access code, we removed our code duplication and adhered to the don't repeat yourself principle or dry. This had the benefit of simplifying our code, making our changes easier, smaller, and less risky. The easier we make our code to change and maintain, the higher our code quality will be, and the more time we'll be able to spend on forward-looking initiatives that drive value to our users. The second benefit is it abstracts away the data layer implementation and makes our architecture more loosely coupled. By having this abstraction in place, our controllers and services no longer need to be concerned with low-level implementation details. This means responsibilities such as managing database connections can appropriately be pushed further down the architecture. This makes it easier for different layers in our architecture to change independently of each other, providing more flexibility and opportunity for innovation. The third benefit is it makes it easier to test our code. Because our business logic layers only need to know about the behaviors of the contracts we provide, 
we have the flexibility in our architecture to use different implementations of the same interface. This allows us to create mock implementations for the purposes of automated testing. The more testable we're able to make our code, the higher quality it will be and the faster we'll be able to deliver to production. Lastly, we looked at some of the best practices when implementing our own repositories. We looked at providing behavior for all the CRUD operations and how we can map these operations to the underlying SQL or HTTP commands. We also looked at a typical repository contract that we could reuse for other objects in our solution. And lastly, we considered how our repositories and interfaces could be made generic. Remember how we utilized our entity base class for our objects to inherit from. This allowed us to create an entity repository to handle all of our CRUD operations in one place. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found some value inside this video. And if that's the case, please remember to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel and for us to continue to bring you more coding concept videos. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.